Whenever we study exponential functions in calculus, the uh, the function that we spend 99% of our time looking at is e to the x. Um, and that's really odd because e is such a strange number. Uh, it seems more likely that we would spend more time looking at like 2 to the x or 3 to the x or 10 to the x or something like that. But if you go through any calculus textbook, whenever they talk about exponential functions, uh, especially related to any sort of real life problem, the vast majority of the time they're dealing with e to the x. And so I just want to make a quick little video just kind of explaining just some basics about e. Why is he so important? What is he? You know that sort of thing. So uh, let's get to it. e to the x is an exponential growth function. Um, being that e is a constant that's approximately 2.718, which we'll get to in a minute, that base being larger than 1 indicates that it's growth. And so it looks very much like all the other guys. Uh, it slightly um, grows faster than 2 to the x and slightly slower than 3 to the x. So it's just an exponential function somewhere between these two guys. And so uh, you might think, well, what's so special about him? Well, I can't unpack all the uh, amazing properties that this constant has in this video. Uh, but if you look in the description, I put links to a few different resources where you can do some extra reading. Uh, in this video, I just want to kind of scratch the surface in explaining, you know, what's so special about this number. Okay, so as I said earlier, what is E? E is a decimal that's never ending, 2.718 and so on and so forth. It continues forever and it never repeats uh, in, a, in a continuous pattern. It never repeats. And uh, now how do you get it? Well, it's um, derived by this limit process where we have 1 plus 1 over n all raised to the nth power. Um, now you might say, well, where'd that come from? Well, we'll explain that in just a minute. But uh, for now, I just want to convince you that this really does converge to E. So what I did was just to speed things along, I went ahead and typed that expression in the calculator. And then I went to a table and then I plugged in different X values. Now the first X value we could actually do by hand. If N is one, then you have one plus one over one, that's two and two raised to the first is two. So that seems pretty clear. But then as you take larger and larger n values, or in this case, x values, all I did up to like a thousand, you can see that it starts to converge to 2.71. And if we keep going, it would go 2.718, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it'll never pass that quantity. It'll, it'll converge to that uh, never ending decimal right here. All right, um, couple properties before we get into why this came about. Um, just a few math properties about it. It's irrational, which means this number here cannot be expressed as a fraction. You know, you can't express E as like, you know, s you know, seven over two or, you know, 22 over whatever. I mean, you can't express it as some decimal quantity. Um, because it's never ending and never repeating, uh, you won't be able to express it as a fraction ever. Now a much more difficult property to prove, uh, this was a, an amazingly difficult um, proof to, to work through, uh, E is what's called a transcendental number. Now quick little crash course, uh, a number is um, transcendental if you can't write it, uh, write a polynomial where it would be the root of it with um, rational coefficient. So for instance, like the, the number two is not transcendental. Why? Because if you made up the polynomial x minus two, it would be a root of that polynomial. Because if you plug in two, you get zero. And, uh, and so you can't build a polynomial to where if you plugged in e to the x into this polynomial, uh, it would make it equal zero. Uh, amazingly hard proof to do. Uh, matter of fact, there's still an open question. There's a math question that people still don't know the answer to. It's still not been proven if e to the e power is transcendental. We think it has, we think it is, and it's fairly sure, we're fairly sure that it is because you have 2.718, one never ending decimal raised to another never ending decimal. It's almost certain that this would have to be a transcendental number in the same way that it would not be the root of some polynomial, but nobody's proven it yet. It's very, very difficult. All right. Now, why is E important? And this will kind of lead to answering where in the world this, um, limit quantity came from. Um, E, 
came about actually in the study of logarithms first, but they didn't really know it as E. They kind of stumbled on this number, but it really wasn't clear, you know, that this was the number E for exponential functions and all this kind of stuff. The, the place where E became really kind of crystal clear that, oh man, this is a really important quantity was in the study of compound interest. And, uh, and you can think of it like this. If you, if you had a dollar, and let's say you were going to get a hundred percent um interest throughout a year well then if that interest is paid one time at the end of the year at the end of the year you'd have two dollars right you have two to one original dollar and then a hundred percent in interest would give you one dollar in interest so two dollars total but um as you guys probably know interest can be compounded more than just once a year it can be compounded monthly or daily or weekly or semi-annually or whatnot well the formula for compound interest is a equals p times one plus r over n to the n times t well if we have a hundred percent interest then this formula will reduce to um, a equals and let's just say our principal is a dollar just to make the math easy we'd have one plus one over n right to the n times and let's just say we're going to do it for one year so t is one well there's that quantity there and uh, and it was discovered that um, as you uh, extended the number of compoundings per year from just one and getting two dollars total at the end of the year if you did it um, monthly so if you changed n to 12 you'd earn a little bit more but not drastically more just a little bit more or if you used 365 or even if you used this continuous compounding in other words if you took the here it comes if you took the limit you took the limit as n approached infinity for one plus one over n to the n power and said if we compounded this thing just constantly second after second and in a limit uh, in a uh, continuous fashion this amount would converge to approximately two dollars and seventy two cents if you rounded it um, in in essence it converged to two point seven one eight so on and so forth um, now that's just kind of the first place where it was like you know thought of that man this is a pretty important number but um but then people started seeing connections to this number everywhere it shows up everywhere in nature in financial math in physics biology chemistry you take your pick um it shows up all over the place um, here's a, a couple other examples. Um, it shows up in exponential growth, and obviously we know the function e to the x, but here's why. Um, when you have exponential growth, the, the reason it happens is because your rate of change of a quantity is proportional to that quantity. I'll give you a quick example. Um, I'll, I'll bet you that the rate of change in babies born every day in China is probably a lot higher than the rate of uh, babies born every day in like uh, Canada population wise. Now why is that? Why are there more babies born in China every day than there are in Canada every day? Well it's because the population in China is greater than the population in Canada. So the rate of change if it's proportional to what that population is it turns out that this is related to the number e and that kind of leads us into our next observation so we'll actually come back and clarify that one more time in just a second. This, this exponential function e to the x has this amazing property that it's its own derivative. It's its own derivative and you can see that based off of the graph. Right here where the y value is 1, if you look, and you have to take my word for this, the slope is 1. If you look right here where the y value is 2, well the slope is steeper, it's actually 2. Um, and so on and so forth. And e to the x, not 2 to the x or 5 to the x or 10 to the x, e to the x is the only function that does that. It's this amazing property. Now let's actually go back up here for a second. Um, when you have exponential growth, look at this here. The e to the x function is the perfect function to be a solution to this equation because the derivative of e to the x uh, equals e to the x. And so you, you, know, you wouldn't want to use a polynomial here or, or a square root function or something like that because its derivative would not be equal to the original. But um, e to the x is the, the perfect fit. 
And, uh, and so we, we see that happen in financial math. You know, if you have more money in an account, it'll grow exponentially because it's uh, growing proportional to how much you have in there. So as you earn more interest, then it grows faster and it kind of maintains this shape here uh, when, whenever you have a situation like that. Okay, so those are just a, a few couple different things that are that make E very, very important. Um, a couple of extra things that are just kind of interesting little side notes here. Um, you can express E as an infinite sum of one over N factorial and you can try this. Uh, you, you know, you have one plus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial and actually try it for, for a few terms and this will wind up converging to 2.718 so on and so forth. And in all my years doing math, probably the most, um, uh, probably the most impressive formula I've ever seen is this formula here. It's called Euler's formula. You should uh, look it up. I, actually, I'll put a description, uh, a link to it uh, in the description of this YouTube video, and you can you can search on it or read about it a, a little bit more. But it's a, an equation that relates probably the most uh, the five most important numbers in all of mathematics you have um, zero which is the additive identity you have one which is the multiplicative identity you have pi from geometry is a very important number 3.14 this very long decimal um, e which is this 2.718 transcendental uh, irrational number and you have i which is the complex number i and in a, some amazing way, if you take 2.718 raised to the 3.14 from a totally different field geometry where E is from calculus times I plus one, you get zero. It's just amazing. In other words, this quantity here uh, turns out to be negative one. And so negative one and one make zero. Um, this has been proven a thousand times over is rock solid. It totally defies logic and reason, but it's true. And uh, so I'd encourage you to do some reading on that as well. So, um, you know, I barely scratched the surface on why E is so important. Um, but, you know, hopefully you just have uh, just a little bit better appreciation for the number E and why we spend so much time, the vast majority of our time studying the exponential function E in calculus as opposed to all the other guys.